What's up everyone, it's Joe from The Wrong Channel, and here today I've got another retro game haul for everyone. Nah, I'm just kidding. That was just a one-time thing speeding the video up, and I only did it because it was a lengthy video in excess of 20 minutes, and I'm not trying to make videos that long unless they're really focused on something and I actually have a lot to say about it. So, in addition to that, to make these videos shorter, I'm going to decrease the time in which I actually have between the videos. So where previously it was like a month or two between the videos, I'm going to try to cut it back to two weeks or so apart. That way it'll be less games to talk about and less time that it actually takes to talk about them. So without further ado, I'll just jump right into it. Now the very first thing that I got was a Game Genie for the Super Nintendo. Now the only reason that I did this is because I plan on live streaming some RPG games and taking a note from Kevin of the KWK Box channel. Great channel, by the way. Check it out if you haven't seen it already. I'll put a link in the description. Um, but a great trick that I learned from him is that you can use the Game Genies to input codes to get more experience from the monsters when you kill them in the RPG games. This makes the live streams faster and cuts down on the time for grinding, which is pretty much the only reason, the only thing that I'm going to use the Game Genie for because I don't really want to cheat to make myself powerful, I just want to cut down on time. So that's the only reason I really got the Game Genie. I don't have much experience with a Game Genie. Um, closest thing I'd have to that would be a Game Shark for the PlayStation. And speaking of Game Sharks, I also picked up Jaws for the NES. Now, this is a game that I had seen in the local retro game store last year, and I passed on it at the time. It was about $5. And I figured I'd just pick it up the next time I go back, and when I did, it was gone, and they haven't had it since. But I found a new retro game store, and they did have it, as well as many, many, many other games. This, this store has a lot of games, and unfortunately, they're not alphabetized, so you have to spend a lot of time looking through all that they have. Unfortunately, I found Jaws, which makes me exceptionally happy because I have a retro review planned for this game. And it's one that I'm really looking forward to. I know that I'm going to have a lot of fun with it because it's going to be different from any of the retro reviews that I've done till now. So look forward to this one because this one's really going to be a gem of a retro review. I cannot wait. Now another game that I picked up was Bram Stoker's Dracula for the Super Nintendo. Now I had this game on the Game Gear, and I really liked the Game Gear port. My only exception to that game that made it bad was because of the small screen size and how quickly the screen moved, you constantly ran into monsters and kind of had cheap deaths. So you basically had to memorize where everything was in order to play it. Now I was hoping that since, you know, it's a Super Nintendo, so it's going to be a larger screen, that problem would be eliminated. Unfortunately, this is actually an entirely different game. Um, still a Bram Stoker Dracula game, just different company made it, so it's different in play. But this I've got a lot to say about, so I'll probably reserve that for another retro review, but, you know, I've got a lot of inspiration for this game right now. I also picked up Mortal Kombat 2. I played this game a lot when I was a kid, but for whatever reason, I never actually got it. Until now. And as far as I can tell, this actually completes my Super Nintendo collection for the Mortal Kombat games, because I already had Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 3, and Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. And I'm pretty sure they only made four games for the Super Nintendo of the Mortal Kombat series. They may have made Mortal Kombat Trilogy, but I'm pretty sure that's PlayStation and not Super Nintendo. I could be wrong. But this is a great game. I love the earlier Mortal Kombat series, like I said in the previous Retro Game Hall video. Good game. Reptile is my favorite. Uh, Reptile and Smoke, they're about tied. So I also got a, a blind buy, um, Metal Morph, for the Super Nintendo. It's just got a really cool cover. You know, it's a guy blasting some aliens. So it was a cheap game, so I picked it up. I played it a little bit earlier, and the first stage is a side-scroller platformer, where you play as a guy that's basically like the T-1000 from Terminator 2. And, you know, you collect 
You collect continues in the side-scrolling part of the game as if they were power-ups because you get killed in one hit. So you're constantly picking up these continues. And the first stage is really short, and that's the side-scroller part like I, mean, like I mentioned. But then after the first stage, it's like a space shooter um, using Mode 7 from behind the ship so you're shooting forward at all the enemies that are coming at you. And it's kind of really disorienting. It's not like Star Fox at all. I think Star Fox pulled it off much better than this game does. And I think it's actually mostly the shooter style uh, kind of flight mode. And I didn't actually play enough to actually see another platforming uh, part of this game, which is unfortunate because I think the platforming was better than the actual flight mode, but you know, that's not really saying much because the platforming could have been better, but it wasn't bad for what it was. But yeah, that was Metal Morph. Uh, it's a cheap game. You know, I really wouldn't spend too much money for it uh, if you see it. Now, the creme de la creme of what I picked up today. Now, this is kind of an anomaly because I don't really see too many games that are complete in box in these stores, and I got Act Razor. This is a game that I played briefly when I was a kid, but I've heard a lot of good things about it, and I'm somewhat familiar with it. Um, it's my second Enix game that I picked up, the first one being Seventh Saga. And I really think that Seventh Saga is a great game, but unfortunately the cartridge that I got had a defunctional battery in that there was no battery and there was bad soldering all over the place on it. I actually took that into the game store today to have them fix it. They cleaned all the uh, excess soldering up and they put a new battery in it, but unfortunately it still wasn't saving. So I had to leave it with them because they were going to try to put a more specific battery in it in hopes that that would work. So I'll let you guys know if my Seventh Saga ever actually gets fixed and I can save. Because it's actually a pretty hard game and I know that I'm going to have to end up saving a lot. Otherwise I'm just going to leave the system on some weekend, like the entire weekend, as I try to beat it. And that's not really something that I want to do. Um, but yeah, Act Razor, which I'm actually kind of surprised because this game store had probably close to 30 complete in box games. I also saw uh, Wolfenstein 3D, but the guy wanted like $80 for it, and it was like a rental store copy. So like the case was kind of beat up and everything. And I, I mean, as far as like Wolfenstein goes, it's kind of like Doom. Um, great PC game, but the Super Nintendo ports aren't really uh, that strong, so I'm not going to spend like $80, $90 for a complete in box game of Wolfenstein 3D just because it's complete in box. You know, the store is kind of taking advantage of it, the gamers at that point. But I did pick up Act Razor, and this game actually is in great condition. So I paid a little more than what I really wanted to, but you know, I did a little research before I actually committed to buying. And, you know, complete in box, if I had bought it online, I would have paid shipping most likely, and that would have made it cost more. So, you know, bit the bullet, got myself some Act Razor, and it's a really, really great cover, too. It's one that really stood out in the rental stores when I was a kid, which is what prompted me to rent it in the first place and play it. So, I'm going to give this one a playthrough probably in the next couple of days and get my full thoughts together on it and maybe do a retro review of it. But that was my haul for today. Um, all in all, pretty good. We got a nice little handful of games. Found a new retro game store to go to. Uh, unfortunately, it's another one that's about 30 miles away, but it's in the same town as one of the other retro game stores that I go to, so it's not a huge loss. But thanks you guys for watching. If you got any recommendations for any reviews that you want to see or any live streams that you want to have, you know, let me know and I will totally be game to get on board. If I don't have them already, I will look for them and yeah, you guys have a great day. Have a great day. Great day.